Over the years, pig farming in Kenya has gradually risen to become one of the top agribusiness ventures. Pork accounts for 38% of the world's meat production, making it a very popular meat. Pigs require adequate space, quiet environment, and enough food. <laughs> There is no specific pork market in Kenya, however, due to popularity of pork products like ham, bacon, sausages and burgers, companies like Daichi have come up with their own outlets in order to explore the entire value chain in the business. Our farmer Jennifer Koome tells us that pig farming is a combination of having the right breed, good housing, proper feeding, disease and pest management, among other practices that must be observed. Let's get her story. I'm sure most of you are lovers of pork and sausages. Hmm? But well, do you know where this begins? Today I'm taking you to Daichi Farm, one of the biggest pig farms in the country. And they're going to show us how this begins in the farm to the plate. So wait until I finish this, then I take you to the farm. to today's episode of Kilimo na Biashara. Like I told you earlier, we are at Daichi Farm and we're going to take you through pig farming. So join me in the farm. Jennifer. Hello. Hi, Linda. <laughs> Finally, we get to meet. Welcome to Daichi. I've been longing to be here. Yeah. Can we go to the farm? No, 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 we can't. Uh, what? Because uh, <laughs> we need to kit you up. Oh. Yes. See, I thought I'm ready. No, you're not. Uh -huh. Biosecurity here is very very key okay so, since you have your own apron uh -huh. i think overall i think mm -hmm. we'll give you gamuts. gamuts yes okay so that you bring don't bring diseases into our pigs from nairobi from nairobi okay. or wherever you come from <laughs> thank okay. you peter can i please have a pair <laughs> oh thank you peter number 39 39 so is for you. me ah good great let me sit here please take a seat now i'm fully set Wow, ready to go. For the farm. You're ready to go. Now let's go. Let's go. We go. Yeah. I love your zeal. You're wow. really waiting for this. I want to see your thing. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Another one. Uh -huh. Before you get in, mm -hmm. we normally dip our gumboots here. Oh. Again, to kill uh, any pathogens that we may have carried. Yeah. Please follow me. Linda, this is the mothering unit, mm -hmm. uh, aka maternity. Uh -huh. This is where we keep all our animals uh -huh. that have uh, babies oh. for purposes of uh, taking, being taken care of. And they have so many babies. Yes, pigs give birth to more than uh, 10 babies at a time. Can it sustain the yes. feeding program? Yes, it can sustain very easily. I didn't expect to find a clean pigsty. How can a pigsty be clean? How have you managed? We love to keep our pigs clean uh -huh. because uh, contrary to what Kenyans think, mm -hmm. pigs are very clean animals. As you have seen in the maternity wing, um, we cannot afford to have dirty animals because this is where it all begins. How did you begin and why pigs? <laughs> we began uh, farming pigs because uh, we were looking for something to do. You know, we, we needed something to bring us back home, uh, a side hustle. And uh, as we did our research, we, we came across someone who was doing uh, pig farming. And we were quite impressed by what he told us. 
and uh, when he gave us his story, we knew oh. right away that's what we wanted to do. So Jennifer, when someone wants to begin pig farming, you start with buying piglets or you buy grown? We began with the uh, in-pig gills, 50 of them as I said, and uh, we brought them to the farm just a month before farrowing. Farrowing is what you'd call giving birth. And uh, within a month, they had all started giving birth to, to, to the little piglets. And from there, we grew the piglets to winners. From winners, you grow them to pokers and from pokers to baconers. And at the baconer stage, they are ready to go out to the market. What are other management practices that you do here? You have seen one of them, which is uh, biosecurity. You ensure that you don't bring in pathogens and you don't take out pathogens from here to other farms. That's number one. Number two so is the cleanliness, the general cleanliness of the pe pens. You have seen how we keep them clean. That ensures that uh, animals are not going to get uh, sick very often. We also have ensure that uh, we have vaccinations for the breeder stock and we also ensure that any animal that is not, is not is sick gets treated yeah. and very fast. So since we are at the maternity wing, what is the most sensitive thing in this particular section? The most sensitive thing in, at this stage is to ensure that they are clean, they are warm. When it's, when it's hot, you must keep it cool. And we, we are able to keep that, uh, the, cooling them by ensuring there is enough uh, drinking water. Sometimes they will roll where it's cool because uh, pigs have no sweat gland. So we ensure that we have enough drinking water to cool, to cool down. When it's uh, cold, we have curtains, as you can see, and we bring them down so that the atmosphere here, the changes of uh, weather outside, does not affect how these pigs are inside the, pig, the pig's thigh. And this is one way of ensuring that they gain weight because they are not going to be stressed about the temperature. So it, they will be resting, and while a pig rests, it's adding weight. So one pig can produce like how many piglets at a go? One pig can produce uh, between 10 to 15. And uh, we like our, at the farm, we like it when they give us 14 piglets. Because more often than not, a mother will have up to 16 teats. So it means every pig will have a teat that it can latch onto when it comes to breastfeeding. So what's the gestation period for pigs? Interesting question. <laughs> Pigs take, uh, have a gestation period of three months, three weeks, three days. Ah, three, three, three. Three, 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 three yes. Wow. So how many times can a pig reproduce? At the farm, we are able to, to get uh, 2.5 baths in an year. Meaning she will have, uh, she'll do two cycles, before the end of the year, she'll do another half. So it's a 2.5. So Jennifer, we are at the maternity wing, but before we move to the next section, how, how is a normal structure for pigs? How should it look like? In a basic pig structure, mm -hmm. you require space for the mother mm -hmm. to be able to lie down. Yeah. You, you require enough space for mm -hmm. the piglets to be able to walk around mm -hmm. so that they can exercise. Mm -hmm. You also require mm -hmm. what we call a uh, a wet area because pigs never go to the toilet mm -hmm. where they sleep so they will always go to the toilet where there is water and where it is wet mm -hmm. and light that is why you can see we have that slight uh, mabati mm -hmm. so that it guides the pigs where to go mm -hmm. yes in case they want to, to go to the toilet wow that is yes that is called a dining area mm -hmm. and then we have uh, a creep this is where we feed, the creep is where we feed uh, our young, young ones so that the mother doesn't eat their feed. That's where we start to introduce them to feed. With one pen, how many pigs should be in one pen? Can it accommodate two mothers, three mothers, or it, sh it should just be one mother? It's, essentially, it is best that you keep one mother on her own with her litter. Because when you have two mothers, there is competition. Mm -hmm. And there is that stresses up the piglets and also the mothers. Yeah. And they are not able to put and, or gain weight as they should be. Yeah. So essentially, each pen mm -hmm. with, its own, with only one mother mm -hmm. and her piglets. Mm -hmm. When, we, had, when she, we have uh, weaned her at 35 days, 
Then we shall clean the pen, we shall soak it, clean it, and then after two or three days, we'll bring in a new mother mm -hmm. from the breeding section mm -hmm. who is awaiting mm -hmm. to give birth or to farrow. Wow. Yes. So are we going to the breeding section now? We shall go to the winning section. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, let's go to the winning section. Welcome. Okay. Linda, mm -hmm. remember our agreement? Oh, <laughs> we have to deep. <laughs> I see, you're so keen on biosecurity. Yes. Because uh, that's the only way to ensure our pigs stay healthy. Wow, these are beautiful. Which stage is this now? We have seen the farrowing in the maternity section. Mm -hmm. After they have been weaned from their mums. Uh -huh. For how many there. days? How many days does the weaning take? Uh, 30, we win them at 35 days, mm -hmm. but these ones are slightly older, oh. as you can see. The other mm -hmm. ones were smaller. These ones are slightly older, mm -hmm. so these are not purely fasted winners. Uh -huh. You see, you look at this one. Uh -huh. This one is going to make a very nice, it's going to give me very nice bacon. How do you know it's going to make a good look, bacon? Look at this ham. So it's oh. nice and rounded. Uh -huh. It tells So you. this is bacon. Yeah. When you look at this, this is bacon. I see bacon, I uh -huh. see sausages. <laughs> Here is one of your, you can see this pen is full of your favorite ones. Eh? Ah, black and white. Oh, we have got Peter here. Uh -huh. Peter, how are you? I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Hey, Peter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Linda, this is uh, Peter. Mm -hmm. He's our farm manager mm -hmm. and he's uh, a vet doctor. Oh. He's the one who takes care of these beautiful animals that you have seen. Indeed, they are beautiful. You could actually ask him the questions that you're asking me about diseases. He's oh. better off answering me. Okay. Yes. So I can take over from you, here. He can take over from me. And as then I see, he... look at these other pens. Okay. Yes. Sour, sour. Peter, I see you're inspecting. How are the pigs here? Our pigs are doing very well. Mm -hmm. We are just uh, now doing our normal rounds mm -hmm. to check if there are issues mm -hmm. which might have come, come up during the night or mm -hmm. uh, in the course of the day. So which types of diseases are pigs prone to? This cause, the diarrheas, and at times we, we have pigs develop, coming up, developing issues with nervous, nervous signs. Mm -hmm. We normally call them uh, meningitis. Those are the major issues in, in, this, in this farm setup. So how do you control these diseases? Control for scores or diarrhea, mostly we want to know where the disease comes from. It could be nutritional, it could be an hygiene problem. So when we realize it is a nutritional problem, we ensure we introduce good quality feed at the right time. Mm -hmm and the feed should also be clean mm -hmm. and also the feeding area should be kept clean. Mm -hmm. uh, when we realize it is something else, it could be bacterial, it could be viral, mm -hmm. we just use broad spectrum antibiotics mm -hmm. to treat our animals. Peter, I've seen so many breeds here from the black and white, pink and also brown. So which types of breeds do you have here? For this farm, mm -hmm. we have three major breeds. One, we have Landres. The second breed we have is Large White mm -hmm. and the Duroc. The Duroc, we have the males only. We breed with our breeding uh, sows mm -hmm. for just because they give us good uh, baconers, mm -hmm. which grow very fast. So which one really commands the market amongst all this? So far, Landres and Large White are the major breeds in Kenya. So from an expert point of view, if a farmer wants to venture into pig farming, what are those things that they should be knowing before they venture into it? First thing is you should uh, get the right people mm -hmm. to help you in terms of advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in terms of, uh, you sh first it is a business. Mm -hmm. So get the right people who can help you in terms of writing that good business plan. And then you, write, you get the right uh, experts in terms of which who will be enable you to understand more about running the, and managing the farm. Uh, pig meat is, is actually very sweet and it is also very nutritious and which also translates to quality, quality meat.
Jennifer. Yes. How are your boys? Oh, you can see Mr. Boa is happy. He is talking to his uh, ladies. The sow. So what happens at the breeding section? This is our breeding section. Mm -hmm. This is where we keep uh, our boas mm -hmm. and uh, sows. Currently, we have uh, 13 boas mm -hmm. and uh, 199 sows. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, 23 inpig gilts mm -hmm. and we have another 20 maiden gilts. So how do you ensure that you have a successful breeding in your farm? What's, what we normally do, we have batched our sows into batches of 10, 10, 10. So every week, we are winning 10 sows, uh, which will come back here into the breeding uh, section. And between within uh, five to seven days of winning, we give them a boar. We normally use uh, the natural method of uh, mating, and that is why we have a higher number of uh, boars. So for the bacon and sausage lovers, this is for you. Let's go. So these are the baconers, quite big. Uh -huh. What are they good for? This is where we fatten them mm -hmm. and uh, we expect, as we give them food, for them to convert into one kg on a daily basis. Uh -huh. So from here, we shall take them straight into, the, into slaughter uh -huh. and then we can get our nice bacon and sausages. <laughs> so how much do a kg of bacon go for? A, a kilo of uh, streaky bacon goes for 1,200. Uh -huh. uh, and how is the uptake of pig farming in the country? For Daichi, we are very lucky because we have our own processing plant, which is based in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we don't, we are not able to sell at the factory, we take to Farmer's Choice, uh -huh. who is the biggest uh, consumer of pigs. Take us through the value addition that you do here at Daichi Farm. We have uh, pork cuts, very delicious, very juicy, your ribs, your, your chops. We also have uh, sausages. We have the fresh sausages, we have cooked sausages, we have ham, mm -hmm. as well as uh, bacon mm -hmm. and uh, three types of bacon. Jennifer, I've seen the entire process from the beginning to the baconers here. Where is my bacon? Linda, <laughs> please follow me. Uh -huh. I take you to Nairobi uh -huh. where we can have some bacon, uh -huh. some sausages, okay. a nice sandwich. Okay, yes, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. The Daichi, not farm again. This no, is the factory. This is a factory. But before but, you go in, mm -hmm. same same thing. <laughs> biosecurity. Another biosecurity measure. Yes, because we deal with food. So when we were coming, you you put yeah. some in your pocket. Yes, I keep <laughs> them in my pockets. I also uh -huh. have to do the same. And then please sanitize your hands. Okay. We now can get into the factory, Linda. Okay. These are some of the things we shall come and sample on our way back. Mm -hmm. So Linda, mm -hmm. this is where the action begins. Oh. And this is our cold room. Uh -huh. This is where we normally bring in the meat when we have slaughtered oh. so that it can get to the right temperature. The first point. The first point. Yeah. Yes, and uh, the meat, when the meat comes out of here, mm -hmm. it's frozen. Oh, yes. let's see, let's see. Yeah, you let's can, uh, you can peep in. Eh? <laughs> Linda, you can peep in. Uh -huh. You can see mm -hmm. all these uh, legs oh. that we have slaughtered. Yeah. They are waiting to be done a number of things. Uh -huh. Uh, legs, you said they are legs. <laughs> yes, they are legs. <laughs> Linda, uh -huh. this is uh, our butchery. Oh. 
and uh, when I, while I'm here, uh -huh. I need to wear gloves uh -huh. so that uh, I can show you. You're hands-on. You. When you get to the butcher, you're also hands-on. Yes, I'm hands-on. <laughs> and again, it's a biosecurity measure. Uh -huh. Remember, we talked about uh, ensuring that everything is kept almost uh, sterile. Yeah. That's why we freeze our meats, because mm -hmm. we do not want any issues. So here in the butchery, you know for other butcheries, we see uh, a lot of meat hanging around. What happens here? As you saw, we don't. that's why I took you to the whole room, yeah. because all our cuts are sold frozen, yeah. except when a client has requested for fresh meat. Oh. So we we'll keep this in the freezer for two, two nights, mm -hmm. uh, two, two days, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And then when it has, uh, when it's frozen like this, yeah. Then we bring it here and cut, and that's how we are able to achieve these very nice and clean cuts. Linda? Yeah. I see Benson here. Oh, Benson, <laughs> you're doing sausages. Yeah. What is wow. Benson doing? We are doing wow. premium sausage. Premium sausages. Linda? Mm -hmm. This is the exciting part. Oh. Eh? Right next you saw where Benson was making sausages. Yes. Now Jane here mm -hmm. has already packed them mm -hmm. and uh, she's going to label them for us oh, before we okay. release them into the market. This is the labeling section. Yes. She, oh. He told you those sausages were called what? Uh, premium sausages. And you can see the, the label says? Oh, premium sausages. And this one so has premium 10 pieces. So premium means it has a high level of meat content. Yes, high, so high level meat content, okay. over 60%. Uh -huh. Final part. Uh -huh. Remember the chops that uh, we cut there? Yes. So we come and uh, vacuum seal them here. Oh. Yes. And the Benson again is going to show us how they do it. Uh -huh. Very quickly, Benson. Mm -hmm. uh, you will seal two or one. Mm -hmm. So this is basically vacuum packing, yeah? Oh, just to ensure no air gets in. Yes, to stuff. remove all the air yeah. out. Benson has uh, finished vacuum sealing. Mm -hmm. We shall now go to coding our products. Uh -huh. So when you say coding? Coding mm -hmm. shows the dates that this has been packaged uh -huh. and the expiry date. Oh. So we have the short life, which is mm -hmm. 14 days if it's kept in a chiller. Yeah. And we have the longer life, which is uh, six months if you kept, kept frozen uh -huh. and uh, minus 18 degrees. Oh, yes. So it determines the date of expiry, date yes. of... Yes. Ah, ah, you can see that. So this is the code. This is the code. It actually has today's date. Yes. And Processing the expiry date. date. Oh, you have an online shop? Yes, that's where we do our dispatches. Wow. Welcome to our online shop. Uh -huh. This is where we do all our dispatches mm -hmm. and uh, we need to sanitize. Oh, again? Again, <laughs> yes. Okay. Please, welcome. Mm -hmm. so, Hi, Missy. Hi. I have come up Thank got you. A, a client for you. <laughs> I'm just showing her around the shop. Send me an invoice for this. <laughs> hmm? Linda, mm -hmm. come I show you another display we have here. Wow. You know we can remove these things now. I have been waiting for oh. you to say that. And I can actually keep this aside for you. As long as we as don't lose them. Nobody's going to eat this, Linda. <laughs> Come, this I show you a display we have. This is don't worry Lala. about this. Come, follow me. <laughs> wow. 
are the products you have seen. This is right a from the farm setup. Yes. To here, this mm -hmm. is our end product. So this is the Daiichi display. This is the Daiichi. Mm -hmm. This is the Daiichi family. Wow, wow, wow. Processed, uh -huh. cuts, uh -huh. and you also have whole cuts. This is so nice. Yes. So guys, I took you all the way to Isiolo, to Daiichi Farm, and I brought you back to Nairobi. You have seen all the products here, from bacon, loin, to sausages. So this time, we're going to test all this, and I hope you've enjoyed the show and you've learned something. If you're interested, you might as well travel all the way to Isiolo and buy the pigs, or see how farming pigs can go. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed and kama kawaida, we must test these products. So till next time, my name is Linda Koske. I would do this. Oh, you do this? Yes. It's a hot dog. Yeah.